All right, guys, so today we're going to be doing tips to get you a five star review. I know, I know, it's so hard and it's a little bit uh, annoying, you know, to go after these reviews. And, you know, especially if you're coming from it from an investor standpoint, you know, you're all about like, I'm giving you this and I want you to give me that. But the truth is, you're in the hospitality business. It's all about you want customers coming back. You want people happy. You want people just excited about coming to your property. And you have to understand those things. So just do this. A few things. A, be nice. You have to be nice. B, be courteous. You have to be courteous. You have to go out of your way to make the people feel like you care about them. C, give them what they need and what they want. Okay, so it's like you don't go to a restaurant and say, hey, I want a Diet Coke and they give you a Dr. Pepper. You know, if you don't have Diet Coke, you might say, I got Diet Pepsi. Or you might say, you know, I'm sorry, we just don't have that but you feel bad because you can't give them what they want. So that's kind of how I want you to come at this Airbnb business. Think of yourself as a restaurant or as a hotel and you're there to serve these people. So you want to give them as much as you can, as easy as you can, and as courteous as you can. Even if they're upset, don't let yourself, don't let your emotions get in the way. Don't be, um, don't take everything personal. You know, in the beginning, I took everything personal because you do this property, you fix everything the way you want it, you know, uh, you, you put your heart and your soul into it, and then you find out, like, the people they didn't appreciate it. They, you feel like, you know, these guys are just mean and they're whiny or they're needy. And especially a lot of these new people that come to Airbnb, like most people, I would say over 50% of guests are all new and it's the first time they've ever been on an airbnb so you want to be able to give them the best that you can so a couple things that a little hacks that i can do that i do as well so one is i send them a message at the end of the stay i say i walked through your property and i wanted to thank you for taking care of my property and this is if they took care of it like if they're, uh, they didn't destroy anything. I said, I walked through the property. Everything looks great. Five-star review coming from me. Thank you so much. Come stay with us again. Not asking for it, but giving what they want. Because they get a review as well. So, And this is only if I haven't had many problems with these guests. If I had problems with them, I'll kind of leave them alone. And then I'll review them at the end. Like right the last day. Because you don't want to review them right away. You just want them to uh, to leave you alone because you don't want a bad review. So you want to get the good reviews from the good guests and then you want to encourage them to review. So you really want to double down your efforts to get good reviews from the good guests. And then they'll remember you because you'll be in their feed of uh, reviews. So you want to say, you know what, I saw your place. Well, you, thank you for taking good care of it. I want you to come back five-star review coming from me and I send that to them in the messages and then they can come back and give me a review they'll be encouraged to give me a good review because I'm giving them one and I'm letting them know up ahead ahead of ahead of time it's a little bit of a cheat but it works works every time and I get a lot better reviews that way and it's a way to kind of increase your review uh, balance now I do encourage people to review the bad reviews the people that should get a bad review, but I would say review them um, when you like when you when it's when they're the time limit's almost over. So I would schedule that with the VA, or I would do it myself, like uh, an hour before that time limit's over, and I would just send the review, boom, so that it doesn't alert them to come give me a bad review immediately, right? Um, also, I would do when you when you when you have a problem and you're gonna have to charge them for stuff. 
I wouldn't review. I wouldn't say anything. I would make open the claim because you have to open it within 14 days. But don't finish the claim until right after or right before the review process is over so that it doesn't influence the way that they're going to give you a review. So you don't want to alert them because then they're going to bash you in the reviews and there's nothing you can do about it. Also, another thing that I really screwed up on early on was people that are doing cancellations uh, because you have a strict cancellation policy and then if they cancel on you, they still can review. So one thing you can do is you can talk to Airbnb about anybody that never actually stayed in your property and you can get those reviews removed because uh, according to their policy, they have to stay, check into your unit to give you a review. So anybody that didn't stay in, their, in your property, they can't review your property because they never stayed in it. So that's another hack to get some of those bad reviews off you know, some of those Karens and Kens off of your review column. Also, uh, sometimes too, I like to go personally to properties when they have a complaint. And, and then also I like to call. So if, if it's an extreme, not extreme, but like, if it's like a level four to five problem, I'll pick up the phone. And you know what? It makes all the difference. If you pick up the phone, hey, you know what? I, I saw you, you're having this problem. What's going on? How can I help? And you don't come at it from a place of like upset or angry that people are complaining or that there's something wrong with your property. And if you go in there and you give them the time and you give them the effort, I'm telling you it's going to help with your reviews. Um, another thing, comments. You have to be, you have to be friendly in your comments. Don't, don't be so brash. Also with people that, um, People that are asking a million questions in the comments before reserving, usually that's a red sign. Uh, there's a red flag that people are just going to bash you in the comments, in the in the reviews. So co I, if I, somebody does that to me and they ask me like 20 questions, I'm like, you know what? I don't think this place is right for you. And then I will just either retract my uh, pre-approval or I, I'll decline the reservation. And that's, and then, and you know what? They get so mad. They get so mad. You you, you decline a, uh, a customer, they'll get so mad. But there's nothing they can do. They can't review you. They can't do anything. And you just, they'll go to somewhere else. And you know what? We have to be selective. And sometimes even with new um, guests, you like if you, because you check to see if they have past reviews, right? You might want to, you know, mention to them, is this your first time staying in Airbnb? Let me tell you how some of this stuff works. And then you can, um, you get ahead of some of these problems with new guests by just explaining to them, um, you know, you could even do a quick reply, one of those pre-save quick replies, you know, and, and just have like this whole script of everything. Hey, this is what's different with Airbnb and hotels. This is what you can expect from us in a hotel. And if you can set those expectations ahead of time, you're going to be a lot better off because a lot of times, um, People just have different opinions, you know, and they just don't understand it. They're like, hey, my towels are dirty. Can you come exchange them? And you can do that. But it's this level of that, that we owe them something that really gets on people's nerves. So I highly recommend, um, you know, setting the expectation ahead of time so that people understand, you know, what, this is not like a hotel. You can't expect all these things to be done for you immediately. But we're here to help. You know what I mean? Like, I want to give you the best experience ever. This is what makes Airbnb way better. You know, and we're here to help. Also, people that are immediately trying to negotiate with you on price through Airbnb either are going to be a really good guest or they're going to be a total nightmare. So, if, if it's a red flag to me as well. If somebody's negotiating on price before... You know they've they've gotten in the property or whatever you know they they're either really experienced or they're trying to hack the system um also with animals or one thing that that i immediately decline is when somebody sends me a reservation and then after the reservations like been sent to me then they're like oh yeah you know what i have more people coming and i also have animals right and to me that 
I just don't like it. I think it's shady. And a lot of those I decline, right? And I just, I just know I don't want to deal with that because a lot of times those guys are going to be the ones that give you the most problems, you know? So, uh, you just want somebody to come in straight, you know, talking to you, whatever, and you won't have any problems with it. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a blessed day and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.